All right, welcome to October 12th, Microsoft DevSync. We have a special guest, Kevin Jordan, is joining us today. Uh, he's been working on our Mark II design. He's just going to be uh, mostly listening in, but maybe he'll pipe up uh, from time to time. So welcome, Kevin. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Well, glad to be here. So where's Chris? Bear? There he is. Um, so let's just go through our um, our sprint uh, real quick. Uh, if Chris, you could pull up the, uh, the current active sprint, and we'll just go through the issues. Um, remember, I don't, I don't, we don't need a recap of every particular issue. Uh, let's just hit the highlights uh, in terms of any problems that you have, um, and uh, just a general sense of whether you're making progress that you uh, you anticipated making, or you know, are, are we going to finish this sprint on time? Um, or rather, are we going to finish the things that you thought we would finish in this sprint? So, thank you, Chris. Um, so we can go ahead and start with you. Okay. Um, so I'm working on implementing Yes, thank you. Oh, I mean, we can just make it simple. When they close the tab, it's the end of the session, right? That'll be our first pass, and we can get fancier later. Well, you can do it on the You know, what are we buying ourselves with that? We do have a uh, insert timestamp on the on all the tables actually, so you could probably infer a session, um, you know, from looking at groups of timestamps if you wanted to, um, just you know, for it and, and know who did it. Um, is so the tagging is the
Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, just yeah, just. Say That, but that's a different idea that we, I don't think we. All right, well, it sounds like there might be an issue that needs discussion here. So let's take a note of that and, and uh, move on. But I think you've got your short answer there, Chris. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so. Okay, great. This is the Okay, any surprises or anything um, new pop up for the rest of the week we should be worried about? Uh, no, everything's going, going pretty well. I, I still haven't uh, I dropped uh, reviewing Kevin or Ken's large PR. I need to spend more time on that. But I got too involved in this API thing. So. <laughs> um, but other than that, everything's going well. Yeah, I saw that there was some back and forth on that PR uh, having to do with a bunch of stuff I didn't really understand. Um, and uh, it, it looked like somebody was throwing up their hands on it. And so I, was, I just wanted to make sure that, that that PR is not getting abandoned. Well, it might have been a different PR or, uh, that I'm thinking of then, but it had something to do with um, some of the, some of the things that Kev, Ken wanted to do um, were causing problems. Um, oh, you're looking at uh, the pull request for. The yeah, that was it. So uh, could he make his change independently to a different branch? It's, it's a different branch. Okay. 
But was it a Kiwi issue or was it a message bus issue? I, I don't know the answer to that because I've never run QT. Uh, all I know is with this build, with my hardware, this fix is a very annoying bug. <laughs> and um, I understand uh, from a Git perspective what's going on in that this branch hasn't emerged to master yet. There's a lot of stuff that's in it, uh, and we've been releasing from that branch. So, like I said, I'm not going to, you know, worry about that too much. All I know is that if you look at the diffs on inter Is, is this yeah that was my question is like it seems like it's a pretty uh, targeted change uh, and I was wondering if we couldn't just apply that change to the master branch or to the QT branch directly Okay, clearly this is... Okay. Yeah. Got it. such that bug fixes like that could be applied. Yeah, uh, so I don't really understand everything that's going on here clearly. Uh, so it's confusing to me as to why uh, you can't merge a spot change into you know a, a different uh, branch, but maybe it's because that change that fix doesn't apply to the other branch because it doesn't the problem doesn't exist in the other branch, right? So yeah, in other words, this branch is Like this branch to this okay. So, so, so it sounds like it's specifically re related to Kiwi versus QT, uh, or Qt. Yes. And yeah, I, I think that's a valid statement. Okay, so I think this will be resolved by the end of November. Very specifically, it will be resolved during our uh, our get together, uh, assuming that goes forward. Um, you know. I, I think it requires a, a high enough bandwidth communication between everyone that we could probably just hammer this out in a couple of hours um, if we if we're able to get together and talk about it. Um, otherwise, you know, we could all we, we could also schedule some time uh, to have a separate meeting about this. Um, but honestly, I just don't understand the the difference between the architectures, you know, of of Qt versus Kivi, and you know why it's not a swappable module or that kind of thing, you know. Uh, and, um, you know, maybe that just wasn't a consideration at the time and it wasn't important, but, um, you know, I think we need to get together and have a, a talk about, you know, the future of the, the GUI interfaces and interfaces in general with the devices and with core, um, and just resolve this once and for all. And I think we can do that during our, our, uh, you know, the sprint we're, we're planning for at the end of November. Um, that would be my preference. Uh, and then, then we'll just be done with it. Okay, but are we not building uh, our images off of the same branch that you're working on? We are. I just haven't done a build since he merged that change in. Okay. Well, that's also a thing that Josh is working on in terms of 
being able to deploy builds and stuff like that. So um, not that that necessarily affects us, but OK. Um, all right, moving on. Uh, so that was Chris's issues. Um, uh, well, Ken, since we were chatting, why don't you go next? Okay, uh, there's plenty of stuff we can be doing uh, on the Mark II uh, in anticipation of getting our next rev of the boards back this Saturday as well. So um, that might be something that uh, it would be useful to loop you in with Kevin on to. Uh, yeah. uh, anything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we should uh, have a chat with you and Kevin just to bring you up to speed on, on the changes. They're pretty minor for this rev, but there are some optional changes that we do want to test relatively quickly uh, because they will impact the next rev of the board. Um, you think maybe it makes sense sometime tomorrow? Sure, yeah. Hello, uh, OK, uh, so is that it for you, Ken? That's it for me. OK, uh, Derek, how's it going? Yep, looks like a box. <laughs> With speakers. <laughs> yeah, it's a box. It's speakers. The uh, I showed in the um, the little tiny circles that are supposed to be the grill did not print nicely. So mm. uh, that's directly on the print bread, and it's tried to do uh, what are ten thousand little circles and did not like it. Yeah, it'll likely be the design we use for production, but yeah, it's just not going to cut it fresh again. I'm going to just. Simplify the heck out of it. Did um, that come out of a 3D printer? Yeah, directly out of my, my preset. What, does everybody own a 3D printer except for me? Jeez. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> right. really yeah. expensive. That's you right here. Yeah, 800 bucks, you get a nice one. Yeah, you can resolve that problem pretty quickly, Ken. That's not that's not one of those that's, that's going to take a, 
a whole lot of thought, you should absolutely have a 3D printer. Like, remember how it was when you used to, like, have to write letters and, like, print them on paper and put them in the mail and they went from here to there? Like, that's what solid plastic objects are now. Like, why would I mail it to you? Like, Maybe my wife will buy me one instead of a lawnmower. <laughs> you should put a 3D printer on the lawnmower. See, that's the way to do it. Double tap. Well, I could, I could 3D print a lawnmower, hopefully. <laughs> that you could do. Th those, those ones are a little more expensive, though. <laughs> yeah, it's about three grand for the robotic lawnmower, and it only mows three quarters of an acre, but they're definitely... I definitely have them on my list of things that I would like to have at some point. It's just fascinating. In the 90s, I was uh, at a company, and one of our sub-companies was a plastic injection molding company, and they were growing about how they had just bought a 3D printer. It was like only $180,000. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, oh, the other thing I should mention, I, I got all parts ordered for this 20, we're getting 25 boards, we're going to make 20 of them in the um, full prototype. So I've got all those parts ordered now. Um, some of them have, the pies showed up, um, some of the cables showed up, so should be getting them by the end of the week, everything. Great. That will sync up very nicely. Um, and, all right, well, Josh is next on the list, so. Yeah, yeah, move my to do the in process document backup systems with precise data and then you can throw me a new tag that says make updates work i am uh, i just sent you another one Isn't the number going to be zero right now? I thought we turned that off. Well, we're definitely getting new wake words. Okay, I must like, be thinking of something else. Code, but if people don't have the most recent version of the code, it'll still be running. <laughs> we didn't disable our server. Got it.
Oh, okay. Well, we need to address that as well then. Great. More tickets. Uh, okay, uh, Gez. How are things going? Awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, yeah, I guess that's everyone. Uh, was, oh, was there anything else where you done, guys? Okay. Uh, just a quick update on my end. Um, uh, really, the only salient thing is. Uh, work on the hardware. We're expecting the next rev of the SJ201s to come back on Saturday and Kevin's going to uh, um, test those, program them, and ship them off to Derek um, uh, hopefully by Monday. 
and that will uh, you know that'll allow us to get our dev kits out to well not the dev kits but this iteration of the prototype uh, out to uh, to all of us um, and uh, so we'll all be working off the same same piece of hardware uh, for the first time in a while um, and uh, immediately after that uh, we're going to do another rev uh, that changes some of the parts makes it more reliable and um, uh, will be a cost reduction and, and add some other features. So uh, we're at least three revs away from production uh, hardware. Um, with the third, you know, if, if all goes the best it can according to plan, the third rev will be what we ship to our, uh, our Kickstarter backers. Um, but uh, there may be um, there may be another rev or two in there, just depending on on how bugs uh, it, whether we get any bugs with the uh, the next iteration. So that's the hardware update. Uh, and it sounds like we're on track. We're in sync that uh, Derek's going to get all the parts, the rest of the parts, other than the SJ201, in uh, by the end of the week. So we should be in good shape for putting these together next week. And um, so that means uh, I'm going to be coming up with a couple of tasks. Uh, I think Kevin's going to handle most of them, but maybe Ken will get involved as well. Uh, in terms of getting prepped for the bring up on the, the new SJ201 board. Um, so uh, we'll get that ready. And also, we can start work on the tests uh, for the next iteration um, of the board. Uh, there are some provisions in the current uh, spin uh, that are optional. They're not things that we have to do, such as getting interrupts over the USB bus instead of via a GPIO pin. And we haven't actually tested how that works. And before we do another spin that's going to rely on that being functional, I want to actually test it in software. So, um, so there's a couple of things like that that we want to do before committing to a final hardware design. And um, that's it for me. All right. Um, so that's it uh, for this week. Or for this week. <laughs> that's it for today. And uh, I'll see everybody again on Wednesday. Can folks stay on after the recording? The